I'd like to take a look at configuring and customizing various window managers and desktop environments within Fedora. But first, I want to take a look at their defaults. So we're starting with GNOME, GNOME 40 and Fedora 34. This is the default desktop for Fedora and Red Hat. And since I've been using KDE since about um, 2014 or maybe even longer, let's take a look um, at the tour here. All right, so let's see what we've got in our tour. All right, so activities here. So here we've got along the bottom, little bar kind of reminiscent of Latte Dock in Plasma or the Mac Dock, except it doesn't um, jump up like the, either the Mac Dock or Latte. <coughs> you can go to a different uh, virtual desktop over here, an empty virtual desktop, come back to the one we were in. I'm not sure what triggers creating yet another virtual desktop, maybe having something in there. We can explore that as time goes on. Let's see what's next here. All right, make apps your own, arrange the grid. Okay. So the workspaces is what we were just looking at before. I don't have a laptop, so this doesn't help me. And that's it. They hope you enjoy it. Excellent. I'll just go ahead and put yes for now. All right, so over here, we've got our Ethernet settings, access to GNOME settings, the ability to turn off. We've got our audio, click on settings here. <coughs> All right, typical for GNOME, very simple, easy to use. Looks like it would be nice with a touchpad or a touchscreen. Um, Nice, simple, simple. Options here. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look. Let's go back to activities. And if I click here, here's all the applications it came with. Quite a few pages of them. So, in, oh, that's because I've installed a bunch of stuff on here, uh, different um, desktops. What I think is interesting is the lack of categories. Um, now, generally speaking, when I'm uh, either using Windows or on my regular Linux stuff, I tend to just type the application I want, but you can do up here in the search. But if you're looking for something, it's rather interesting not to have any categories because what do you find it? You just keep looking and looking until you find whatever you're looking for, I presume, uh, which is okay, not ideal, uh, but it's not the end of the world. All right, let's uh, log out and we'll take a look at the next desktop environment we have or the next window manager. Okay, here we are. Here's our list of desktop environments to start up. I'm gonna skip Plasma. I just did a video about KDE on Fedora Kinoite and I'll put a link to that rather than loading that up. Let's go to Sway and let's see. So Sway is a um, Wayland enabled version of i3 and I believe you can use all the same configurations that you would use in i3 um, give or take there may be some slight differences okay so we find ourselves here in a desktop environment where we've got the clock up here, we've got the date, 
we've got one representing our uh, one desktop that we're in. Right click does nothing. Middle mouse click does nothing. So I'm going to try Windows R. That's usually the way you launch things in these in, you know, uh, i3, Qtile and so on. So do R, it says resize. So that's not what I wanted. Let's see if I do enter. That should give me a terminal of some sort. All right, so we've got Alacrity, we've got a terminal. All right. Let's see here. I wanted to run Firefox. Let's see what the window manager does by default, where it puts it. I'm not sure if this means we're not getting Firefox or not. We'll see in a moment. Very interesting that SE Linux is upset about that. Oh, there we go. All right. So looks like by default with i3, we've got a, I wonder what the default is if it's not Firefox. Um, <clears throat> so by default, we've got a, looks like a column. Let's see what happens if we add another terminal. Yep, so it looks like we've got a column set up here where it just keeps adding columns. Um, we can go to desktop two, maybe, yep. So there's desktop two, go back to one. Two should disappear because nothing's in it. Um, I think maybe a shift sends something to desktop two. Yep, so now if we go to two, we've got this um, terminal taking up the entire virtual desktop. Come back over here, we've got Firefox, all right. Let's see. Um, let's see what what this thing says about running commands in Sway. <laughs> right. I'm gonna do a quick pause of the video. Okay, it turns out I may need to install something like Rafi, or there's a Wayland version called Wafi. We'll worry about that later. Let's exit out of here and let's check out another window manager. All right, it's time to check out Blackbox. I haven't taken a look at Blackbox in a good 10 or more years. All right, looks exactly as I remember it. Loaded extremely quickly, which is nice. Uh, memory usage on the VM has plummeted. As you can see, it's much more responsive than Sway was. So I would say probably really good if you're on a limited spec computer. Uh, this appears to be some random um, menu that it came up with irrespective of what i have installed on my computer like star office how old is this menu creation this is kind of bananas Let's see if i actually have xterm on here doesn't look like it our xvt no okay oh there we go i've got that one Got our various workspaces. All right. It looks like this is going to. I know this has a lot of potential for customization based on what I've done in the past, um, but it, it looks like it's going to need the most customization just to get it to a regular working place. So we'll have to see definitely very old school looking by default. Reminds me a lot of when I last looked at it a long, long time ago. All right, let's go on to the next one. There's not much to see here. All right, we're gonna move on to Cinnamon. Uh, I chose software rendering since I'm in a VM that doesn't, I don't think have access to the graphics card. Um, so we'll see what that means in terms of how responsive or how well it runs on here. 
I believe I have a decent amount of memory dedicated to this VM, but I may need to increase that um, in the future just to have a less irritating experience. Um, Gnome seem to be. Hey, there we go. There's some kind of chime. All right, so uh, cinnamon, I believe, is one of the um, window manager slash. Hey, look, updates. Window manager slash desktop environments that um, is supposed to be reminiscent of GNOME 2. Uh, this one is as set up by default, kind of more of a uh, GNOME 2 as it was set up by Fedora and Red Hat in the past. They um, they used to have it look a lot like um, Windows. Uh, at a time when the default GNOME 2 had the upper bar and the lower bar, they just had the lower bar. Um, but I think this makes it a potentially... Oh, I like that. Okay. This is a potentially good environment to give someone who's coming from Windows um, in this type of setup. Look at this. This is very Windows reminiscent. Um, unlike GNOME 3, we've got categories. Um, again, I don't always use categories. Um, I usually would just say, you know, Firefox and then just run it. But I like that that's there for people who want to explore what's on the system or what's possible. Um, sometimes with some of the names that software has, this can be very illuminating, like, oh, this is under internet, so this probably has something to do with the network. Uh, let's see, I like up here, what have we got? We've got Firefox. Hmm. Oh, here we go. It's showing on the bottom. I was waiting for a tool tip and it's actually showing down here. So here's our updates, our system settings, terminal. All right, so this is actually pretty, I like this. This is very, very well set up. All the things you might need. I imagine you can add some more things here. It's for nice quick access. Um, let's take a look at what the file manager looks like. All right, so um, it said here Nemo. I'm not sure if that's the default GNOME file manager or if that is, I guess it's not the elementary one. I think the elementary one has its own name. But uh, I like these little icons, helps people see what these are really quickly. Um, so we've got here where we can type things in, which is nice. I use that a lot on my computer if I need to copy the um, folder structure for wherever I'm at. What is this? Oh, okay. So we can go to breadcrumb or we can go where we can type it in. Excellent. I like that because this is a lot easier for going back and forth. All right. All right. Very good. I really like the way that's designed. That's very nice. And let's take a quick look at what Dracor. Well, let's look at the settings because that's one of the things that um, desktop environments give you that window managers don't. A nice GUI settings. All right, so again, this is very Windows-like. So uh, Cinnamon looks like a good desktop or Windows environment you can give to people who are used to Windows. Um, let's see, let's take a quick look at something like General. All right, so it looks like they're, they're following like the GNOME um, human interface guidelines. Um, but perhaps a slightly more attractive package here compared to the GNOME settings, which is kind of bare. I like the default kind of darkish settings. That tends to be the way I like to have my desktop set up. And right here, you can see that this is, so this one's already open, so you can see that. But if we got, we got Thunderbird for email and GNOME terminal for the terminal. All right, we'll go ahead and close that guy. All right. It's pretty good. Oh, let's look at what Dragora looks like. Not used to that since I'm a KDE person. Kind of uh, reminiscent of Umix or Yumix back in the day. Very interesting. Let it load up quickly here. Or maybe not so quickly, we'll see. My memory usage is back up to the max and for my VM. You know what, while we're waiting, let me see how much RAM I did give this thing.
Okay, so I gave it two gigs. I should probably increase that a bit just so things run a little better. But we'll continue on our journey uh, once this is done loading. I'm gonna pause so you guys don't have to wait here and watch it um, update all the repos. All right, it looks like it's done creating its caches. Um, by default, it doesn't seem to be telling me what's available for an update, but I do like that we have the categories of where various packages are. All right, I'm not gonna waste too much time on this at the moment. Um, well, let me just take a quick look and see what it looks like if I go into one of the categories here. Well, that's pretty cool. So it tells me what's installed, what needs an update. Very cool. It's well um, oriented to give me a good overview of the particular packages, whether they're installed or not. I like that, that's pretty cool. Uh, I might maybe install this on my regular computer. Sometimes it may potentially be a little faster than doing things on the command line. All right, so like I said, we'll return as we uh, decide to see how we're gonna customize this desktop. For now, let's log out. Very cool. All right, now we're gonna check out Deepin. I have zero experience with Deepin. I think all the other window managers and desktop environments I have installed here, I've used at some point in the past, but I've never done this before. Oh, interesting. Um, all right, let's do normal mode. I like that, that was really cool. That was a neat pop-up that says, hey guys, uh, you're, things may suck for you if you don't, oops, if you don't edit this. All right, and we're loading in. I believe it's still going. I don't think it's done yet. Oh, well, if this is a um, normal experience, I'd hate to see what the other one would be. Oh, there we go. Right. So we've got another Windows like experience here. Let's see what our launcher looks like. Perhaps, maybe. There we go. Okay. So, somewhat Windows-like, except it has everything here. Well, actually, I think Windows is like this now. Windows doesn't really have categories anymore. So you can do categories, but you can do it the current Windows way, All right? Rather than being shortcuts to programs, these are folder shortcuts. All right, let's see. What's this? This is the show the desktop. All right, let's see what our file manager looks like. Wow, okay, so I would say very, very much inspired by Windows. Um, by default, slightly cartoony look, reminds me of KDE 3, um, but not the end of the world. Okay, interesting. All right, let's see here, a calendar. That's a cute little calendar. Okay. And what have we got over here? So tooltips are not coming up, but that may or may not be because of the fact that I'm in a, oh, you can hide them, that's cool. All right. There's our trash, yep. Okay. All right, so this appears to me to be the most Windows inspired, perhaps. Wow. All right. I hear a lot of good things about Deepin. A lot of people really, really like it. Um, 
This here seems to be kind of a cross between, let's see what their dark mode looks like. It seems to be a cross between uh, KDE and um, GNOME. KDE, the latest KDE has this accent color thing as well. Okay, looks like we could have a, perhaps a slightly less cartoony. Uh, here's, here's what we currently have. All right, so there may be some icon things that are slightly less cartoony, perhaps. It's nice that it comes with quite a few of them already installed. All right, so it may be fun to double click test. Huh? That's hilarious. Oh my God. I think if my daughter was here, she would be booing and awing all over the place. Um, so this one may either be the most fun to, to, uh, customize or may end up being the least fun to customize. Maybe there's less customization because of all the work they put into it, but it looks fairly nice. Um, I like a lot of the features they've got going on here. I can see why some people are very much in love with Deepin. And I would say, once again, definitely something I could see myself giving to a Windows user. Let's say there was somebody who was often getting viruses or something, and I wanted to be able to help them not be on Windows and maybe be able to SSH in and administer their machine. Um, all right, very cool, very cool. Let's go on to our next one. Very well, very polished. Okay, here we're gonna move on to i3. i3 being um, the ancestor to Sway. All right, we've not configured it yet, so we'll say yes, generate the config. Uh, we'll have win the Windows key be our thing. All right, so this is more like what I was expecting Sway to look like when we first started, this kind of lower bar here default looks like it's definitely geared towards a laptop. It has a wireless thing here. It has a battery thing here. This can all be um, easily altered. I do believe R. Yep. Nope. That says resize. All right. So I'll have to figure out what the launch command was. I don't remember what it was, but we do Windows enter. Whoa. What in the world is this one? Not alacrity. That's for dang sure. Uh, terminal. Uh, <laughs> not sure what this is, but definitely not in, having its best situation here with, like, I can barely read this. This is definitely not well. Interesting. Interesting. Definitely going to want to mess around with this and see what the default is and change that to something else because this one does not play well with <laughs> i3. That's, that's a freaking disaster. And we open another guy up. So we're definitely in column mode. And we can go over here, open another guy up. Doobie doobie doo, spin, spin, spin. Memory is plummeting. Go to three. Nope, oh, we, did, we did, left nothing in two, so two disappeared. All right, uh, I think we'll just go ahead and exit rather than wait for a terminal that's not coming. That was definitely gonna need a lot of customization. Okay, now we move on to LXDE. I could be um, misunderstanding, but I thought LXDE development stopped and people went on to LX QT? I'm not 100% sure, but I do know that's the next option. So again, uh, a panel that's familiar for people who are coming from the Windows world. What is this meant to be here? Oh, looks to me, it looks like an e it should be telling me about emails or something. Oh 
right. So many system settings. Might be this one here. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so it's open box LXT, so a fork of open box. It's our window manager. Alright. This one this one might be interesting to to customize. I don't see too many people customizing this on the uh, Unix porn subreddit, but uh, maybe there's some potential here. Let's go on to uh, its brother, uh, Alex QT. Right on to Alex QT. Let's see here. I believe it's basically the same thing, just using QT backend. Whoa. All right, so the fact that I started LXDE first, which kind of goes along with my theory that this is the follow-on and LXDE is dead, but I could be wrong. There should be some kind of bar appearing here momentarily, I imagine. At least in the past, when I've installed this on Debian, I've got a little bar on the bottom. It's possible that the fact that it's using the um, configuration from LXDE has screwed something up. Nope, oh, there we go. Drop application icons here. I like that it tells you that they can go there since it hasn't filled them in for you. There we go. It was just taking a while. All right, so that's kind of pretty the way it went. It's not amazing, but... Okay. This is more of what I expect, this bell, not that email-looking thing before. Okay. So, another... I wonder how this works compared to if they have to keep up with the version of QT that's in uh, Plasma or if they have a separate one. Like QT, let's see what these settings look like. So all it has is desktop, interestingly. Um, although the fact that I've installed so many things. All right, well, not um, transport image based on EXIF data. That's interesting. And one of, yeah, one of the things I'm going to test later, not later in this video, but as I customize is how do these window managers deal with having multiple monitors? That's something that's pretty easy to do um, with these with these VMs. Um, the, the way that the desktop uh, pick, background pickers there is not the most friendly one if you're coming from other you know GUIs, right? I mean, obviously, if you're talking about something like i3, it's not going to be that friendly. But you know, most of the other ones kind of show you a little preview of things. Wow, that is interesting. I didn't know anybody still used X Screensaver. I messed up on my password. All right, come on. Boy, that takes a while to reload. Again. All right. Yeah, I like that little warning about unsaved work being lost. Let's see what our next one is. All right, Mate is the other side of Cinnamon. They were both projects that were started to um, continue in the GNOME 2 vein when GNOME went to GNOME 3 and its radical change. Around the same time that Windows went to Windows 8, everyone was kind of going for like a tablet mode type of thing. All right, so this is more the way GNOME 2 used to look. So you've got your launchers up here, very Mac-like. And then the bottom part should have your programs as you open them up. So for example, if we open up Firefox here, see it's down here. So you've got your top bar and your bottom bar. Very, very classic. I don't know what's going on there, some kind of graphical glitch. All right, so we've got our volume there. Another volume for some reason. Connection. Okay. So here we've got everything divided up by categories. Again, exactly how GNOME 2 used to look. Got places, 
So you don't have to first open up your um, file manager, you just go there. I really did like that a lot. I used to really like GNOME 2. Um, this is looking a little dated. Um, I'm surprised they're not using Nemo or whatever, or I guess they've got some kind of really funky um, theme on Nemo if it is Nemo. Let's see. Nope, it's Kaha. Um, so it's okay. Um, it's uh, interesting looking. But yeah, this really brings me back a lot. This is, this is, you know, yeah, going back to the original gnome. All right, um, I definitely don't see people customizing this very often, so it'll be interesting to see how it customizes. Um, and definitely, my, oh, I love this. This just brings me so back to when I first started using um, gnome. In fact, let's go look at that. You can see exactly what I'm talking about. See right here, your top bar, all the icons I had, a couple little widgets I had installed, and down here, things I had open. It really does bring me back. Just a different logo for Fedora. All right, let's get out of here and go to our next, our next, uh, I think we're done with desktop environments. Let's go to our next window manager. All right, it's time for open box. Did we not do that before? What did we do before? We did black box before. So now let's look at open box. I'll be curious to see if nothing else, if it has a better menu going on. Oh, wow. So this one doesn't even have the panel on the bottom. All right. Well, I'll tell you this, it definitely has everything correctly, unlike um, Black Box. So it's got some kind of nice thing going on where it knows what to, how to fill your, your menu. Huh. Interesting settings. These look like the... This looks a lot like the uh, GNOME settings, but I'm, I did click on black, uh, black box, right? Oh, this is just, here we go. That's what I meant to click on. All right, so clear looks, yep. Very old fashioned, but I do like clear looks. I, I used to use it a lot back in the day. Okay. Pretty nice configuration here compared to open box. So supposedly I've got a dock, but I don't see it. <coughs> ah, until a dock app is run. All right. Oh, yes, dock. Right. This is not what I was thinking of. Okay, cool. So this we can definitely do a lot with. So we'll look forward to that going forward. All right, I've never heard of Pantheon before, so I have no idea what to look forward to here. This just happened to be there when I was installing everything. Whoa. This is the first time we have a very different looking background. Very cool looking background. All right, no, oh, no upper bar. We have a lower bar here with a Mac looking um, bar. Okay. Um, Nothing is happening when I right click or left click. Oh, there we go. Oh, here we go. Up here. All right. Oh, wow. Interesting. This seems to be 
like a cross between between like a Mac interface and GNOME. I mean, I haven't used a Mac in a long time. Maybe when you click the little thing up here in the Mac, it brings this little window like this, but this is a, uh, let's see, Pantheon. Oh, nothing here for necessarily for configuration of Pantheon. Interesting. All right. This is very, very cool looking. Wow. Look at that music. All right. Huh. I'd like to play around with this a lot more, but I could, uh, uh, let's see. I wonder if there's a way to make the dock, what the dock settings are. Make it a little more Mac-like, I'm not sure. Well, let me try opening something and see. What, I, mean, I imagine it's gonna add it to there and expand. Yep. Okay. Very interesting. All right, I can see giving this to someone that's got a Mac that you're thinking of converting over to Linux. I think they would feel right at home, perhaps. Wow, very cool. Look at that. Ooh, I like that it tells you the shortcuts. Huh, all right, I'm gonna be very interested in seeing, I'm gonna have to hunt and see what people do, how people customize it, but this is an interesting desktop I've never ever heard of. So I'll be curious to see how it how it works. All right, we're down to our last two. Let's see Q tile here. I've been using this on my netbook because um, the fact that it opens everything full screen by default um, really config config error. It says on the bottom corner. Um, but it's very much like i3. Just uh, instead, it's it's uh, Q tile. Uh, this configuration error may make it so I can't do anything because um, I'm, I'm pushing the button to launch things. Because I know I've used it on my on my uh, netbook and I'm not getting anything. So I'm guessing that um, the fact that the config is having an error is keeping any of the buttons from working. Uh, so we'll have to. We'll have to edit that in a different window manager and then um, come back and see. In fact, um, let me exit out of here. We'll do XFCE. I'll try to edit the config and we'll come back and we'll see what happens. Okay, so XFCE is the first one out of all of these that did not automatically detect a um, different uh, screen resolution. Let's go ahead and fix that. Um, this may not be the right place. All right. Much better. All right. So um, we've got the, what is the default um, XFCE configuration now nowadays? We've got our CDE-like um, dock on the bottom. Up here, we have a um, GNOME 2 style dock, different um, virtual desktops here. All right, and under applications, we've got all the categories you would expect. You can do run program, which is basically equivalent to being able to just type what you want, for example, Firefox. Uh, and additionally, one of the things that I always liked about, um, oh, and it's up here, one of the things I always liked about XC XFCE was the fact that it had the um, right click menu here, which um, was kind of similar to what I always liked about things like open box and flux box and so forth. So let's go ahead and take a look at the um, Q tile configuration. Maybe. Let's see. I 
believe it's not there, which might be the problem. Um, hmm. Let's, let me think. I wonder, I'm surprised it didn't come with one created already. All right, I was correct that it should be in a folder here and it is not. I find that very interesting. Um, additionally, it says it should try to create it if it wasn't created. Again, very interesting. I wonder if maybe Fedora's got an older version of Qtile um, installed or something, or some something about the way that they configured it is odd. Um, we make a Qtile directory. We'll see if that helps. Qtile um, decide to fill it with the default. All right, so we're done with XFCE. It'll be interesting to see what I do here. Um, I've always just used it as the default, and um, it's not a favorite amongst the people who uh, configure their desktop. So I'll be interested to see what I can do, how much I can push things. All right, so let's log out of here and see what happens with Qtile. All right, so I started up Qtile. It still says configuration error, unfortunately. Um, hmm. Interesting. Wonder where it's getting its default config if it's not showing up where it's supposed to be. All right, so on my main computer, I found somebody that has a Bugzilla complaint that it's not loading the config. And uh, still, still persisting as of this June. So, looks like there isn't any, any config. So we'll have to um, figure out how to load one. You know, there may be one on Git. Let's see if I have Git installed. I don't have Git installed. All right. <coughs> see what happens there. definitely in there so that's good all right so let's do let's see where we're at let's go back to our desktop here we'll do git clone you know this may be easier if I SSH in let me pause this for a moment all right I just want to be able to do a copy paste there so let's do a change directory to Qtile Qtile resources We've got a default config there. We'll copy that to config qtile config.py. All right, so the question is, how do I, how do I kill it um, over back over here? Uh, I may need to do another reboot, so Hold on. All right, our reboot is over. Let's get into Qtile and see if it works this time. Of course, it may be stuck at this ridiculous. Nope. D config error again. I find that very interesting because. Oh, goodness. I do have a config. Let's see, what is it supposed to be looking for? It's supposed to be looking for config.py. And if I go
All right, I'm going to guess it's permissions, perhaps. Um, I don't think it should be, but it might be since I created this and not the window manager. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no, wait, no, no, that's the wrong feature. All right. Uh, I mean, everything here should, I believe, be under my name. Let's see if we look in the accession errors. Let's go back up one. Whoa. No module named libqtal lazy. Hmm. All right, so there's some kind of weird thing going on here. I guess we'll uh, get to this one when we get to it. It's it's fine that uh, you know we'll just save this for customization later. It's part of what happens. All right. So essentially, sometime in the future, I'll be doing some customizations. I'll make a little video while I customize things, and uh, see where we end up with some of these different um, desktops and window environments. And uh, basically, this is everything that was in the Fedora repos. Um, so these are all desktop environments that are easy to install and run. Qtile aside. Uh, without any issue. So we'll see you next time. Bye.